This section heading is called social engineering. So HTML injections by themselves are considered to be a type of social engineering attack. HTML injections are also a client-side attack, which means the insertions only occur on client-side files. So when we did this kind of whole attack here, it's only affecting our file. And what we need to do is we need a way of kind of getting this file to other people where they trust it enough that they'll actually try to use it. So what we're going to do in this section here is we're going to incorporate other social engineering tactics in order to get people to log in. So first, we're going to go over to an email server, and then we're going to log in as Bob. Inside of here, we're going to illustrate a step. So we're going to go to Compose, and then right here. So here's what we're going to do. We have that trusted face of the web page, but we also have to have it come from a trusted source within an email. So the user is not going to like an email coming from bob at yearbank.com. The thing we have to understand here is that we're all sharing the same email server in this lab. Now, if this was an attacker here that was performing a well-crafted social engineering attack, what they're going to do is have their own email server and they're going to essentially edit where it's coming from. So we wouldn't be on the your bank domain on the email server unless we were an insider. And in that case there, that's a total different ballgame. But if we're an outsider and we're trying to actually do this type of an exploit, then the attacker would actually have their own email server and they would incorporate something like this. They would say, maybe instead of Bob, they would say your bank at some domain.com or they might even have your bank in the domain name over here, but with other characters, because obviously it can't be the same. But in any event, what we're illustrating here is that you can simply just edit so that the name that it's coming from is trusted. So you'll have a trusted web page, you'll have a trusted source coming through the email. And over here, we're just saying now it's Lisa. So we're gonna assume that Lisa at your bank is going to be trusted by the person that we're sending it to. Next thing we're going to do is come down to the editor type. We're going to select HTML. I'm going to minimize this and then we're going to go inside a lab four. Inside of there we're going to open up the file called phishing.txt. Now what's inside of here is the attacker actually went and did their homework and they made an exact copy of how customers of your bank would be emailed their monthly statement. So this is that message. So control A, control C, close, go back to the browser, and I'm going to make this full screen. So we're going to paste this in, control V. Okay, so here's that message that everybody usually gets, and it's exact. And then we're also going to provide the exact subject line that goes along with it. And now we're going to present our web page through here. The way that we're going to do it is we're going to hide it behind this link. Again, a trusted link. So we're going to go back to our file that's HTML injected. Control C. Go back over to the email message. And we're going to highlight this URL. And we're going to create a hyperlink. Control V. Click OK. And now this is going to be a spare phishing attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to target Alice at yourbank.com. Yourbank.com. And then we'll just send it off and then see if she falls victim to this attack.